Good afternoon and good Erev Rosh Hashanah. Part 22 of Orot HaTshuva of Avram Yitzchak HaKohen Cook. Our learning is dedicated to the Rufu Shlema of Shimona Bas Daniela. Rav Cook comes in the third chapter of Orot HaTshuva to add a new layer to the Rambam's thinking when it comes to Tshuva. The Gemara tells us that Gedola Tshuva Shemivia Rufu Olam that Tshuva is great that it brings healing to the world. That's because, fundamentally, there's a problem with tshuva. The Rambam writes in Hathos Tshuva that Bali Tshuva darkan liot shfeilim vanovim biyoser. That Bali Tshuva tend to be lowly. They tend to act in a humble fashion, but overly humble, so much so that you walk around, they think there's something wrong, they look sad, they look like they're despondent. God forbid, they're not happy, they're not shalem. And that is a negative reputation that is associated with Bali Tshuva, Look how serious they are. They don't smile anymore. The guy never makes a joke. She never wants to have a fun night anymore. And we think that by tshuva, instead of being deep, contemplative individuals who are thinking about loftier things in life, that maybe they're depressed. Maybe something's wrong. So Rav Kook comes and says that there is a special kind of tshuva. When you engage in tshuva, The first thing that happens is you're... you're you're encumbered by tsar, by pain, because you're overwhelmed by the gravity of your sin, by the gravity of what you've done. The shmutz, the deshen, he calls it. He says that when you do the holech musmale oneg v'deshen panimi. So he says what happens is, is there's a trumas ha-deshen, so to speak. There's a cleansing out of the shmutz when you engage in tshuva. And joy overtakes the heart. Joy overtakes the heart that was otherwise filled with that despondency, that bleakness, that sense of, of failure. You let a Kaddish Baruch Hu yourself down. That even though, yes, the Rambam describes there's a sadness, there's a darkness, but it fills you with a light, with a joy. A real Baal Tshuva should be alive, should be happy. He feels that he's becoming close to the Mekor Chayim, to the source of all life, to the source of the Shechina. The one that you felt you were so far from, and now how close you feel to the Ribbon of Sha'olam. Now the soul that was afflicted now remembers with a joy, with a dancing, and you're filled with a sense of thanksgiving. And the soul calls out, Barchi nafshiz Hashem. Ba'al tishkichi kamo gemula v'slech chol avon eichi. Ha'rofei l'chotach lo'aichi, that a Kodesh Baruch heals all my illness. He takes me out of the darkness, out of the sadness. And a Baal Tshuva, therefore, becomes a very happy, a very joyous individual. Not because they're foolish, but because what happens is, there's a cleansing. There's a cleansing from that sadness, which is so natural, which automatically takes over. And what is this the result of? So the idea is that it's really the result of a freedom. A, that you are now freed from the avdus of sin. We tend to think of a person who sins as being free. You can do whatever you want. That's why the Yiddish expression for a sinner is a fry person. The person is fry means they're free. They have no restrictions, they have no limitations. But this word, unfortunately, has created a negative connotation with tshuva. Because the idea is really, you're not a slave when you're about when you're about tshuva. You're not a slave when you're a ben Torah or bat Torah, when you're abiding by the laws and the mandates of the Torah, when you're living a Torah lifestyle, when you're living with the Shekhinah in your life. You're not a slave. At that point, you're really free. And the Medrash tells us, the famous Chazal, that when it says, Charos luchos that the Dibros, the laws, the commandments were carved into the tablets. Al tikre charos el cheros. Don't read it as carved in, rather freedom. That the real free person, says the Mishnah, is a person who studies Torah. You think of tshuva as being, as putting shackles on you, as limiting your, your ability to have fun, as limiting your ability to enjoy life, to enjoy certain experiences that, were, that made you feel alive and free, but rather the opposite is true. When a Baal Tshuva really engages in tshuva, they start to experience true light, true joy, and now you understand that you were a slave beforehand. You were a slave to your desires, you were a slave to your habits, you were a slave to your, to your Averos. And now look how alive you feel. Look how alive you are when you're free from sin. All of a sudden the soul reverberates 
the soul starts to get back in touch with the harmony that we've been speaking about. That's real freedom. That's the joy of the Baal Tshuva. And so don't de- be dismayed when you see people and you think, oh, that person's not having fun. Because real complete Tshuva is when you feel the joy and it comes back in when you're rid of the sin, you're rid of the Shmutz. Everybody should have a Ksiva Vechasima Tova, and we will continue this wonderful Sefer exploring Rav Kook's thoughts on Tshuva after Rosh Hashanah, the Atzeres made Tshuva, and hopefully beyond. All the best.